I think that me and people in my generation dream of a better world because today it is possible. I think that a hundred years ago, nobody would have dared to think that we could eliminate world hunger, that we could eliminate energy poverty or the lack of access of water of certain populations. However, now we have the technology to solve some of the world's biggest problems, like for example, climate change. So we have the necessary technology. We start to have a bit the political will and a bit some of the laws necessary and a bit the financial support. We just need to do the rest. I really think it is possible that we manage to do this thing. And I think that the example of the moon landing, it's exactly what shows this. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3. Whenever people get together, whenever that you have the political support, the financial support, and just the will of the people towards a common goal, amazing things can happen. I really think climate change is such a huge threat. It is such a complicated problem, and it's not going to be easy, but we can do it. If there was a man on the moon, there's going to be... It's possible an end to climate change. Contact light. Okay, stop. I'm Lucia Velocchi. I'm 27 years old. I'm a PhD student from Spain, and my PhD is within the Electrical Sustainable Energy Department, ESE department, and it's about offshore wind farms, basically, about the electrical part of offshore wind farms. In particular, there's one tiny problem that appears there that is called harmonics, and I'm investigating uh, this problem. This place reminds me of the fact that we have been actually harnessing the power of nature for centuries. In the past, it was in a slightly different form, but actually not so different from what we are doing today. And I'm really amazed how they could already, centuries ago, come up with such a technology that helped them back then to solve real problems. In the case of the Netherlands, they started to put all these windmills in order to pump water so that they could actually use the land for other purposes. Nowadays, we're doing exactly the same. At some point, we realized that the way that we were generating electric energy was not sustainable and it was really harming the environment. We looked around and then we decided to go back to the beginning. And uh, we basically improved the technology a bit in order to create the windmills that uh, we're using nowadays. I think that the importance of the electrical energy within the whole energy mix is going to increase. So the importance of generating that electrical energy with renewable sources becomes more important. So it's really important that we tackle the problem of electric energy generation. And for that, uh, wind energy and solar energy play a major role. We are here today at the Vestermeer Dyke. What we can see over here, it's a very similar picture as before in Kinderdijk with windmills. The only difference is that in this case, we have modern wind turbines that uh, use also the power of the wind, but in this case to generate sustainable electrical energy. We can see on this side, uh, a bunch of windmills that are inland, which means that they are onshore windmills. And then if we move only a tiny bit over here, we can see a whole wind farm on the sea. 
the main advantages of putting the windmills offshore is that the farthest that you go outside of the coast the more wind resource that you have and the more stable that it is so the wind speed is higher and also it happens more times during the year Another advantage that you may have is that you would not uh, be causing any kind of visual pollution or noise pollution since, of course, uh, once you go 100 kilometers away from the coast, then obviously over there there's no neighbors that you may bother. There's one more challenge that the wind industry needs to face, and actually not only the wind industry, but all the renewable industries, which is the fact that uh, usually we're used to design the wind turbines in a way that if you connect them to the grid nowadays, it will work properly. However, what we want is not a single wind turbine to work properly, but actually a lot of wind turbines to work together in a grid in which 100% of the power is being managed by renewable energies. This means that what we need to work on is the big picture, uh, the big topic that is usually called the integration of renewable energies in the grid. So part of this big topic of integration of renewable energies is my research topic, which is about harmonics in offshore wind farms. We are right now at the ESP lab at Delft University of Technology, where I conduct the research for my PhD. There are some perturbations in the grid, some small distortions in the electric current that are called harmonics. And what I'm working on is to research more about these harmonics uh, in the specific context of offshore wind farms. These harmonics can cause uh, equipment to age faster, can cause sensors to not work properly, protections to suddenly trip when they shouldn't. In general, they can cause the system not to work as you would want it to be. My research is part of the energy transition because I am helping offshore wind farms, but in general, the grid in general, to tackle the problem of harmonics and thus to achieve, hopefully, a system that is more efficient and better economically. A big part of my research is to do a lot of analytical studies with equations, to work on my computer and several things. However, everything that you do, let's say on paper, it is always good that you can verify it in reality so that you can build a prototype that is mocking the behavior of the system that would appear in reality and that actually you can prove that the solutions that you're trying to propose, that they actually work. And that's where this ESP lab uh, comes about because this is the place in which academia can actually test all these solutions so that we can make feasible the green energy transition. And this is important because that also makes industry to trust our results better, right? Which means that whenever industry has a problem, they may come to us saying, hey, we don't understand uh, what just happened in the grid. We started to put a lot of wind or a lot of solar and suddenly this problem appeared. So then we will study the problem. We will try to propose solutions and we will verify them here in the ESP lab. So, of course, if our solutions, they are uh, tested in an environment that is so much closer to reality, that brings so much more validation and more confidence in the fact that what we're doing will be applicable in reality. And about the fourth rung up, a little more, and another inch. 
Climate change is a threat, and it's a threat that it's not distant. It's a threat that it's not superficial as to something will maybe happen to the economy. It's a threat that will have a real impact in human lives, and it will really cause human suffering. However, I do think we can stop it. We have the technology, we have the knowledge and the resources to stop it. The only thing that we need, and we are starting to really have as a whole society, is the will to actually stop it. So I really think that things are really starting to come into place from the political level, societal level, the engineering level, in order to actually make everything happen so that we can actually confront this massive problem, this massive challenge that is climate change, and actually stop it.